As we evolve as humans, we learn more and more about how the body works and what we inherit from our parents. One of the most studied genes regarding athletics is the actinin-3 gene, sometimes referred to as the athletic gene, a gene that is passed down from our parents. This gene influences the fibre type that makes up muscles and they have strongly been linked to strength and endurance. So having parents that are very athletic gives you a very high chance that you will be too. So not only did Jordan Spieth's dad play baseball in college, his mum played basketball, and if all of this didn't already give him a head start, the family name Spieth can be translated to successful in German. Jordan Alexander Spieth was born and raised in Dallas, Texas. Although being born into a sporting family, none of his immediate family played golf. As mentioned, his mum and dad played sports and his brother played basketball too. Jordan started playing golf at the age of four, the same way most people pick up the game, with a little tax plastic set. Not having that person at home to be competitive with, Jordan wasn't fully committed to golf. Instead, he loved playing baseball with his father and shooting hoops with his mum and brother. But deep down, Jordan knew where he wanted to be. Now, this didn't mean his dad was forcing him to play baseball. Jordan, like every kid, looked up to their dad and wanted to impress his father. And that came mainly through baseball. So Jordan continued to play baseball and got pretty good at it. But his mind was still elsewhere. Taking matters into his own hands though, Jordan practiced by himself. He even cut a section on the lawn as low as possible just so he could practice his putting. That practice was paying off, and Jordan, age 10, now wanted to compete in competitions. Never holding him back, his parents supported him the whole way. He began playing on the Junior Young Guns Tour, and soon got his first taste of defeat, and the world he was getting himself into. The trophy at stake was taller than him, and it would have been his if it wasn't for a triple bogey on the last. Spieth cried all the way home, but surprisingly, this didn't put him off. It just made him more hungry. Driving back home, they drove past the ballpark where Jordan played his baseball. Jordan wiped away his tears and said to his father, I don't want to play baseball anymore, dad. Of course, his father was sad, but he just wanted his son to be happy. Jordan from here was now fully committed to golf. He could now put that entire acting in three gene to good use. His parents joined Brookhaven Country Club to give him the best facilities to practice. It was here at 12 years old, he met longtime golf coach, Cameron McCormick. So Jordan's golf career started, and it didn't take long for people to start hearing his name. He was so dominant, people were turning up knowing they were playing for second place. From 2004 to 2006, he dominated. If he wasn't first, he was in the top five. Coming through the scene at the same time as Spieth was 11-year-old Will Zalatoris. He had the pleasure of playing with Jordan in a practice round. Spieth flared his tee shot well right on the first hole, hits his approach shot in the bunker, blasted out and then jarred a 30-footer for par. He then birdies 2, 3, 4, 7, 8 and 9 to shoot 29 on the front and shot a 63 to beat the course record that had been there for 15 years. Zalatoris couldn't even fathom shooting 63 as a 14 year old. Spieth was just simply on a different planet compared to all of his junior competitors. As a junior golfer, Spieth was the 2009 Rolex Junior Player of the Year and three time Rolex Junior All-American. He recorded five victories and 17 top five finishes during his five year AJGA career. Spieth also won the US Junior Amateur Championship twice before attending the University of Texas, becoming only the second person ever to do so, joining Tiger Woods. Before joining the Longhorns, Spieth accepted an exemption to play in the PGA Tours HP Byron Nelson Championship in 2010. It was the event's first amateur exemption since 1995. He made the cut, becoming the sixth youngest player to make the cut at a PGA Tour event. Spieth was tied for 7th place after the 3rd round and finished the tournament in a tie for 16th place. So at 16, Jordan had already proved to himself and the world he could already compete with the best players on the planet. But Jordan was still going to give college a go. He enrolled into the University of Texas and began another chapter in his golfing quest. In his freshman year at Texas, Spieth won 3 events and led the team in scoring average. He helped his team win the NCAA championship, was named to the All Big 12 team, Big 12 Freshman of the Year and Player of the Year, and was a first team All-American. It just seemed that everything that Spieth did turned to gold, and everywhere he went, he won. In 2012, Jordan earned a spot as an alternative at the US Open after Brand Snedeker withdrew from the tournament due to a cracked rib on his right side. This was a last minute call for Jordan, but he was as ready as ever, and ready to put his name in people's mouths once again. Spieth tied for 21st place and was low amateur, proving he was the number one ranked amateur in the world. All of this glory really got Jordan thinking. He'd dominated the junior division, won everything he could at college level, and had now proved on several occasions he could beat the men. So in 2012, Jordan Spieth decided to drop out of college. For the average person, this would be extremely frowned upon, 
but everybody knew that Jordan was ready and he was just wasting time. Unfortunately for Jordan, he didn't get off to the start he wanted as he failed to qualify for a PJ Tour qualifying school. This didn't matter, however, as he turned professional anyway and signed a deal with Under Armour and BioSteel Sports. With his new sponsorship, he was now able to play in seven sponsor exemptions per year. But that would change after Spieth managed a tied second and a tied seventh in his first few starts, earning him temporary member status which allowed an unlimited sponsor exemptions on tour. Jordan was just doing what everyone had predicted and so much more. That college dropout was soon forgotten about and he was about to make it pay off, big time. On July 14th, about two weeks before his 20th birthday, Spieth won the John Deere Classic on the fifth hole of a three-way playoff against defending champions Zach Johnson and David Hearn. He became the fourth youngest PGA Tour winner and the first teenager to do so since Ralph Goodall won the Santa Monica Open in 1931. With the victory, Spieth was granted full status as a PGA Tour member and became eligible for the FedEx Cup and also earned himself entry into the next three majors. His incredible first season got him a last minute pick by Fred Couples for the 2013 President's Cup. He was also named PGA Tour Rookie of the Year and skyrocketed to number 22 in the world rankings. So Jordan had settled in well. He was an extremely likeable guy and had already built up a loyal fan base. But you could only think he was scratching the surface. In April 2014, Spieth made his Masters debut, coming runner-up to Bubba Watson, becoming the youngest player ever to do so. And with that result, jumping to number 10 in the world rankings. Spieth then earned a selection to the 2014 Ryder Cup team, becoming the youngest American to play in the matches for 85 years since Horton Smith in 1929. Spieth made a huge impact straight away and proved he was going to be a massive player for the US in the future. After heartache in the Ryder Cup and no wins in America that year, Spieth jetted off to Australia to compete in the Emirates Australian Open. It was close going into the final round, but Jordan cancelled out the entire field, shooting a course record 63 to win by six strokes. Just one week later, he won again on the other side of the world in Florida at the Hero World Challenge, setting a new tournament record of 26 under par, obliterating his competitors by 10 strokes. So Spieth ended that year very well, and now people were predicting him for the majors. He started the new year with a win in March at the Valspar Championship, shunting him to 6th in the world rankings. Approaching the Masters, he had two runner-up finishes at the Valero Texas Open and the Shell Houston Open, making him a huge favourite to win a green jacket. But Spieth wasn't thinking like that. To him, it was just another week and another golf competition he was trying to win. On the first day, Spieth shot an opening round 64 to finish the day at eight strokes under par with a three-shot lead. He set a new record as the youngest player to lead the Masters after the first round. He then went on to shoot 66 the following day to break the 36-hole Masters scoring record by posting a 14 under par through two rounds. During the final round, Spieth briefly held a score of 19 under but bogeyed the final hole, resulting in him tying Tiger Woods' 1997 record at 18 under. Spieth set the record for most birdies during the Masters by making 28 and became the second youngest person to win the Masters. So Spieth had done it. It felt like yesterday he had just joined the tour, and he was now a major winner. But it all just seemed so easy for Jordan. Like he wasn't out of second gear, and he wasn't about to slow down. With the green jacket hung up in his wardrobe, Spieth became the number two golfer in the world. But that wasn't enough. Jason Day was in his sights, and he wanted that top spot. Months later, the US Open was being held at Chambers Bay, Washington. All the top golfers were lined up to take home the 115th US Open. Dustin Johnson led after day one, but Jordan just edged him after day two. Day three was the move of world number one, doing everything he could to keep that number one spot. The final round started with four players in contention. Spieth opened up his final round with a bogey to four behind, but then a run of 12 pars and two birdies in the next 14 holes moved himself into a tie for the lead with Brendan Grace at five under par. On the 16th hole, Grace hit his tee shot out of bounds that led to a double bogey. Spieth capitalised by rolling in a lengthy birdie putt to create a three shot lead with two to play. However, on the 17th tee, Spieth pushed his shot well right into the thick rough, which led to a double bogey. And coupled with Johnson's birdie on the 16th, the two were tied for the lead briefly. Spieth made birdie on the 18th to become the leader in the clubhouse. Johnson then had an eagle putt to win the tournament outright on the 72nd hole, but three putted from 12 feet to finish one stroke behind. Major number two of the year belonged to Spieth. He became only the sixth player ever to win the Masters and the US Open in the same year, and the first since Tiger Woods in 2002. He became the fourth youngest player to win multiple major championships and the youngest winner of the US Open since Bobby Jones in 1923. The rest of the season was as dominant as the start. 
Spieth shot the lowest round of his professional career to date, with a 61 in the third round of the John Deere which he went on to win. His quest for the Grand Slam ended with a finish for tied fourth at the Open Championship with a final round score of 14 under par, one stroke out of a playoff. He finally pipped Jason Day to world number one spot after finishing second behind him at the PGA Championship. He then entered the Tour Championship needing a win to claim the FedEx Cup in which he did by four strokes, winning a bonus of $10 million and ending at an unbelievable year. Spieth swept all the major awards for the season. PGA Player of the Year, PGA Tour Player of the Year, Varden Trophy, Byron Nelson Award, and Arnold Palmer Award for leading the Tour's money list. So the rise of Jordan Spieth may be the best we have ever seen. He eventually got that Open Championship win and is now chasing Rory down for that Grand Slam. He has 13 PGA Tour wins to his name and at the age of 28 already finds himself in the Golf Hall of Fame. Regardless of the ups and downs and the peculiar look and swing, Jordan knows how to win. He's back to winning form and Jordan Spieth will no doubt go down as one of the best golfers of all time. Thank you.